some great mentors that I've had over the years. So mentorship is really important. And one of the reasons that I'm going to talk about mentorship in, in today's video is because um, I think that uh, we all need to have a relate. If we want to advance and grow in our life, we all need to have relationships with people in our lives that can teach us things the right way. You know, teach us the the morally correct way to do things, the logis the logical way to do things. And so, I've had um, I've had some great mentors over the years, and so I would like to tell you guys about them so that maybe you can look for the same characteristics if you're trying to find a mentor that can help teach you about uh, some Mercedes Mercedes stuff or you know help you develop your mechanical skills. So probably number five on my list, I'm going to do in descending order, probably number five on my list was um, Larry Fletcher at CIS Flow Tech. So Larry's alive and well, you know, he was a big help to me when I was trying to learn about KE Jetronic and K Jetronic. And I remember if um, some of you might remember when I got my first six major 16 valve project that belonged to my buddy Graham Cookingham. I don't know if Graham ever watches his channel. If you're watching Graham, hey. Uh, Larry spent hours every day walking me through all of the logical steps that I needed to learn how to perfect KE Jetronic. And it was not easy. The system the system at the time did not make a lot of sense to me. And um, a lot of the time, if you don't have somebody going over KE with you step by step, you won't understand some of the nuances. So Larry really helped me out with a lot of complicated things, but I think the one thing I learned from Larry is that sometimes you have to reinvent yourself to be successful. And I think at the time, uh, Larry was Larry had been a motorcycle racer in the past, and he had owned a garage, but then he wanted a business. He didn't want to have to deal with the public so much. So that was when he started CIS Flowtech. So I think the the one thing we could take away from Larry is that if you were a smart person and you put the effort in, you can reinvent yourself and develop a whole new career later in life and become good at something. This is key when you're trying to learn about a Mercedes that's 40 years old that nobody else understands. So uh, number four on my list is probably going to be uh, Albrecht Stotchel at Brooklyn Motor Works. And I think Albrecht was very generous when he invited me to come you know, do like a work study there for one week. And um, although I don't necessarily agree with everything about Albrecht or the way he runs his business or some of his views about certain things, I, I think that a lot of us can agree that uh, who know him that he, he uh, really has put a lot of time and effort into setting up his operation that he cares very deeply about it. And I think that that's a good, um, that's a good aspect to have. And so I think the thing from Albrecht that I learned back in 2011 was if you're going to do something, totally commit yourself to it. Don't commit yourself to it 50% or 80%. Commit to it 110%. And, uh, you know, Albrecht would get really frustrated when he didn't see the same level of commitment out of others, including me. He said that I was more of a marketing guy, which I thought was really funny. But it also made me think maybe I'm spending too much time on the marketing part and I'm not spending enough intense study actually learning how to do this job as well as I should. So I, I sort of shifted my focus a little bit to learn the cars a little bit better and to challenge myself more. And um, by the way, uh, extra commitment to a job usually manifests in the form of challenging oneself. So <laughs> number three on my list uh, would probably be, um, hmm. well, I guess, I guess number three on my list would probably be Chester Allen, my editor at Sports Car Market. And so Chester and I, developed a good relationship and um, he really believed in me and supported me a lot. But I think the thing that I learned from Chester was that uh, you can't let an operation like a magazine or a garage or whatever go unsupervised. You have to be like God is in the details. Every little single part of the operation has to be under control. You have to build relationships with people where you know what you want from them. And the final product has to be proofread and checked and proofread and checked and verified for consistency and accuracy. And so this is something in my business that I've tried to do well. Hopefully I have proven, you know, to the, to the people who, who rely on me for this work that I do that job as well as I can. I know I'm not perfect because I'm one person, but when I saw how they would do table reads of sports car market of every issue to find any errors or inconsistencies, 
uh, I understood why it was such a fine product. Whereas with you, have, when you have magazines that are, you know, put out by one or two people, you can understand why the the error level might be so high. Number two on my list is my machinist Jim Dean, and one of the reasons why I like working with Jim is because he completely flipped my attitude around about machinists and machine work. I had a negative opinion about machinists until he and I met. And anytime I'd see a Mercedes with a rebuilt engine, red flags would go off because I'd assume that something seriously wrong had, had occurred there. But in Jim's case, uh, he, he did a great job of introducing me to the correct process behind rebuilding a Mercedes engine and how you cannot have any tolerance for, um, uh, for wear and tear and um, why... If you see something that is out of spec, you have to replace it if you want a perfect result. So machine work is a whole different forum than any other, you know, than any other type of mechanical work because you have to be always looking for things that have failed a tolerance test, a, a, a tolerance or clearance test. And this is a this is this can sometimes be a very difficult thing to measure and identify. But I think the one thing we can learn from Jim is that if you cut any corner, it's going to affect the entire product. And I had to learn this the hard way recently with my buddy Greg's 280SL. Um, I had a situation with the injection pump where I didn't thoroughly test the car enough and it got away from me. And so that led to a lot of frustration because uh, I realized that, you know, applying the Jim Dean method, the item that you leave to chance is going to be the one that bites you in the ass later. That's the lesson. Now, before I get into number five, I'm going to include an honorable mention, Lloyd Lisko. And Lloyd was a great mentor. He ran uh, A-altered drag cars out of San Antonio and then Shreveport. And Lloyd was, Lloyd was about as much of a cowboy as he was a physicist. I mean, he just understood everything about machine work and properly building an item that would that would last the test of time but he was also extremely sensitive to mechanical imperfection so i think the one thing that i learned from lloyd is that people want things a hundred percent and this is early on in my career sometimes i didn't know how to make the hundred percent result but i kept working towards it people want things a hundred percent they don't want to be told oh yeah we cut a corner here we didn't do the best job here because we were too busy working on this over there you know, and I applied this principle to how I ran my business. And now instead of people coming here and saying, I want A, B, and C fixed, but not D and E, they usually want the entire car sorted, which is, you know, a good feeling because I, I didn't realize that that sort of thing existed when I was 22 years old. Now I'm going to get into my number five person. And um, that person is my dad. So my dad, I should probably do a, a dedicated video on my dad, but my dad did a lot of stuff in his lifetime that I think was very beneficial for me. And one of those things was um, he taught himself to read and write. He, he really did not have a good degree of literacy and very little schooling, but he had to learn to read and write the Western alphabet and learn to read and write English because he had to go to school to be a flight engineer, and so he wanted to be a flight engineer, and without a good deal of literacy, he couldn't do that. So my dad's technical execution of English was not great, but his understanding and comprehension of the language was extremely good for somebody who had very little formal education. He did eventually become a flight engineer. Now, I think the one thing I learned about my dad, learned from my dad, was that there is a solution for every problem. And sometimes we don't believe this. We look at a problem, we go, we have to totally tear down the whole system and start over again. But we're working within a system or a design or a mechanism, there's always a solution for every problem. We have to believe that. Now, often my dad doubted me. He withheld being proud of me for being more cautious about my decisions. When I did things right, he was very affectionate. When I did things wrong, he was very angry and aggressive. And um, I don't think that these are usually characteristics of a good mentor. But if anything, they taught me consequence because consequence is something that we often don't have enough exposure to, especially my generation or younger. And so, you know, there are always consequences for when you don't try to do your best. And there's also a way to do your best Sometimes you don't know what it is. Sometimes you have to put a little bit of work in to improve yourself to do your best. But I think I learned just as much from his mistakes sometimes as I did his uh, his achievements. And so here's some good examples. You can't weld a brake caliper back together. You can't 
overbore a worn out engine and then you know try to use a worn out second oversized piston you're going to get a lot of smoke but on the same time on the same token i also learned that uh if you don't have the part you need then there's always a way to machine or build another one if you don't have the right tool or test equipment you need you need to identify what the parameters of the test are because sometimes it's possible to 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 create the test equipment you need without spending a bajillion dollars, which he did on Power Stroke Ford diesel engines. So anyway, if you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And please leave your comments below about your own mentors and tap the bell for notifications so you know when our next videos come out. Remember, every Tuesday and Friday and uh, Saturday, we have the best videos on the web about classic Mercedes. And if you're supporting us on Patreon, we thank you for making this happen. We will see you again in the future and enjoy learning more about your Mercedes Benz.